Hello and welcome to another ServiceNow Express Form video blog post on the topic of email notifications in your ServiceNow Express instance. My name is Darius Kumari and I'm going to be walking through not only some out-of-box examples that ServiceNow provides you to use email notifications for, but some great examples you can build out to extend the functionality of your own Express instance beyond that that is provisioned to you. ServiceNow makes it very easy to make your own email notifications. You'll notice you can set the name, you set exactly what table you want this notification to run on, and importantly, what order do you want it to send in. Higher order numbers will send later, whereas lower order numbers will send before. So if I go look at my notifications, and let's just find my incident related notifications. You'll notice that my incident survey was running at order 100, but maybe I want to make sure this runs after the ticket was updated. So I'll run it at 120. So it's three key areas that you're defining in the system. When to send on either insert the first time the ticket was created or any time a field value changes for an update, following the conditions you specify, then who will receive it, either static users, sort of hard-coded users, or a dynamic field user from the actual form. And finally, what will it contain? You specify that full HTML body for exactly you want what you want this email to contain, along with the dynamic variables that are being pulled from that form. So I hope these examples proved useful in learning and thinking about how you can set up email notifications in ServiceNow. These email notifications that are sent out to the users automatically, those same end users can reply right to those automatically generated emails with attachments, with documents, whatever they'd like to, and ServiceNow will automatically append those updates right onto the source ticket that generated this automatic email in the first place. Incident closes. So let's first of all take a look at it in action and then we'll drill down into how the actual rule is built. So I'm simply going to create a new assignment here. Let's say Joe Employee put this in and we're going to say survey sample email. I'm simply going to put this ticket in the system and I'm going to change the state to closed. How I have my email notification set up is anytime an incident is closed, I'm going to go ahead and send that survey link to my caller. But I'm not only doing that, I'm also using the HTML in my email message body to make it very nicely branded for my company and my IT department. So we'll take a look at how that email notification looks first in ServiceNow and then we'll take a look at in Geo Employees Inbox how that email looked. So let's take a look at our system policy email notifications and see if we could find one survey around that surveys. And we'll notice, here's the one I created for incident survey running on the incident table. So for you, when you're doing troubleshooting with the emails that ServiceNow is sending out, and you know it's when an incident is created or when a problem is created, it's important to know where to look to troubleshoot. The first area is searching by table. So if you had an issue with a problem email. Just search for problem and begin reviewing the examples that are provisioned with your instance. But for now, let's take a look at when my incident survey has been set up. So I named it incident survey. I could see it's running on the incident table and it's running on update. And we'll see it only runs when the state is updated to closed. And we're going to see who will receive this. I'm sending this to the caller of my ticket. And finally, what will it contain? And this is where it gets interesting in that we have the nicely branded message due to the fact that we're able to put HTML source code into here. So you'll notice by using the dynamic field variables such as uh, this dollar sign bracket number here, which I can easily select from from my variables to write, I've also put those dynamic variables in my actual message. And the important part also is the survey link. So when you could see it's a hyperlink that actually points to my survey address. So I'm going to head right over into my email program now. Let's head back out of that notification and take a look at what Joe Employee received. 
So if we open this, we'll see that Joe employee has received his incident satisfaction survey. If I download that images, I could see I've got a very nicely branded ServiceNow IT service management submission here falling in line with my automated survey. If my end user Joe employee clicks into that link, he's going to be brought right into the system to be able to allocate exactly his incident that was just resolved and answer all the questions related to the survey you've built out. So very easy to be sending out these emails simply on incident closure to following the incident table, then to the caller of the ticket with your survey URL link. So let's talk about the next item today, which was using email notifications, and this is an out-of-box one for changes. So if I came in and I created a new normal change, and let's say I'm gonna assign this to my ITIL user. I can put in all my relevant change information, including a plan start and end. So I'm just going to say sample Outlook calendar integration. And Outlook's just an example. Truly, any uh, calendar uses the uh, pro popular calendar format here. And we can go and choose our start date. Let's just say 30th. And our end date, I'll end it on the 4th. I can then request approval and essentially submit this change request into my system. And what we'll notice is following this example, our ITIL user, the assigned to user for this change, will actually get an Outlook calendar invite for that specific date period. So how is that one done? So let's head back into our notifications. Once again, you could search by name or as I stated, easily look for that table. So in this case, change. And I'll see that you could see a change notification or more importantly, the change calendar update. So when I come in, I can look at the users and groups and I know that mine's only sending out to assign to, so I could do a show matching on that as well. So you'll see it's very easy to troubleshoot and drill down into what request are you looking for and working with. So notify change calendar. This is the one in my case that will apply. I could see that any time a change occurs to the plan start or end and my or my if my assigned to changes, I'm gonna mail that new assigned to user exactly and as well as the event creator the change number with the specific link, description, and importantly this change.calendar.integration template, which we will see actually will send your user an Outlook calendar invite. So let me see my ITIL user here and we'll see just like that, there's that IT service desk change which has now been sent to me and I can add it right onto my Outlook calendar. So very easy standardizing and managing your changes using these automatic